Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our worship today. Uh, if it's your first time, we're really happy you could be with us, and it's been so nice to welcome folks from all over the place, uh, uh, all over the country, actually, to join us for worship. We're really glad that you could be with us here uh, today. Um, for those who have been watching since the pandemic started, the pattern is for Bruce uh, to do a wonderful thought in the first service and for me to preach in the second service. Today we're going to switch that around and I'll do the wonderful thought and Bruce will preach at uh, evening prayer. Um, our Bible reading for this service is from the book of the prophet Isaiah chapter 25 beginning at the sixth verse. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well matured wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well matured wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. Um, so I went uh, kind of grocery shopping. I kind of robbed the uh, stuff from our house just across the driveway and from our food bank. Uh, I just want to let the food bank people know that I did buy some more Oreo cookies to replace the cookies <laughs> that I stole. But anyway, and I plan on returning all of this food to its right places. But food's great. <laughs> food is, well, it's vital. We need it. But it's wonderful. And so when I'm tempted to go shopping at the grocery store, uh, my temptation is to get things like this, popcorn. I think that might be healthy. It comes from corn, uh, but there might be a little salt and a little butter on that. Oh, and then I like uh, pop. Yes, that tastes good. And uh, Oreo cookies. Uh, these are the kind that I like to take from the food bank. They're really good. All of the Girl Guide cookies are gone. Um, uh, potato chips, yes, that's a good thing to get. Uh, French fries, they're thawed out, oh well. Um, and ice cream. <laughs> All these things, these things taste so good. Uh, now, I'm sure you know what's coming next. It's all right to have this food once in a while for a treat, for something special, a birthday, or maybe just a, a good night's snack sometimes. But uh, eating this kind of food tastes great. But we know that it's not the best for us. You start to end up looking like me if this is all you eat all the time. So thankfully, God's also provided us with some much better food, which actually tastes really, really good too. Fruit. Like apples, ah, oh, apples are the best. And uh, yogurt, I'm only recently learning to enjoy yogurt, but plain yogurt is good for you. Yeah. Now this is good for you, but I hate it. This is Brussels sprouts. I bought these for Esther and Alicia because they love them. I can't stand them, but anyway, they're good for you. Uh, broccoli, ah, oh, that is the best. That mm -hmm. is really really good for you. You'll be strong and healthy if you eat a lot of broccoli. Milk, milk is, it's amazing, eh? All the different kinds of food. Milk is good for you. Rice, that is pretty good for you. And uh, cheese, not too much maybe, but cheese is, this is fantastic. Look at all the food. And carrots, more vegetables. 
Carrots are very good for you. Honey is maybe more along the lines of the ice cream pop and chips, although I heard there's antioxidants in honey. So I think honey's good and it tastes great. Some more fruit. This is my favorite. <laughs> blueberries. I love blueberries and they are very good for you. And uh, oh, look at this. Somebody made a chicken noodle soup mm. for the food bank. Ah, that's really good for you, especially if you're sick, you got a cold. And bread. Bread, it fills you up really well. It tastes so good right out of the oven. Mm. Maybe not eat too much of it, but it's awfully good. Pizza, and this is healthy pizza. It's got spinach all <laughs> over it. Yes. And eggs are good for you. Oops, this was in the wrong bag. Chocolates, well, if it was dark and less sugar, it'd probably be good for you. But if it wasn't chocolate, it'd be great. It, yes. <laughs> Peanut butter. Oh, and I love pancakes. We have a pancake supper here every year at the mm. church. Oh yeah, that would help. And pancakes, mmm, very good. That's sort of in the good and not so good category. <laughs> And if you're starving and you got nothing, no groceries, and a lot of kids at university, they eat like craft dinner. So there's all this food. It's amazing, eh? God's amazing God that he made all these things. And in my wonderful thought, I'll share it with you now in case I forget. Uh, I learned today that God put 10,000 taste buds on our tongue. Isn't that amazing? So God wanted us to enjoy all of this uh, wonderful food and so much more. But you know, there's a passage in the Bible, uh, again from Isaiah, that says something like this. He says, listen carefully to my words. Eat good food uh, and enjoy rich delight. So, I don't think Isaiah was really meaning uh, apples and carrots and ice cream. I think what he was really meaning was God's Word. Listen carefully to God's Word. Uh, and when you listen carefully to God's Word, and in God's Word you learn about how much that God loves you, how much Jesus loves you, how much the Holy Spirit loves you, and God's Word helps you to, to know how to love others and to live with trust and faith and hope and joy, uh, that's like eating broccoli and cauliflower and apples and peas and carrots and all those good things that make us so strong. And every once in a while, uh, we just need to really eat rich delight. Something more like ice cream or banana splits or something like that. Just to celebrate, just to rejoice about how much God loves us. And we find that out when we listen carefully to God's Word. And when we do that, it's like eating vegetables, fruit, and milk, and good things. Uh, and then Every once in a while, it's like having a birthday party and the cake and all the candies and stuff and treats. It's wonderful, isn't it? So um, it's really important and really wonderful to read the Bible, to read God's Word carefully, uh, and to listen to other people teach you about God's Word. So thank you. Got a song, Bruce Forrest? Well, you made me hungry. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the song is about being hungry for the very best. The very best being the love of God we just talked about. So he brought me to his banqueting table. His banner over me is love. He brought me to his banqueting table. His banner over me is love. He brought me to his Banqueting table and his banner over me is love. He brought me to his banqueting table and his banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. Don't you know that God loves you and I love you and that's the way it should be. Hallelujah. 
God loves you and I love you and that's the way we should be. Okay, he is the vine and we are the branches. The vine and we are the branches, and the road for me is love. He is the vine and we are the branches, his man the road for me is love. He is the vine and we are the branches, his man the road for me is love. His banner over me is love. Yes, don't you know that God loves you and I love you, and that's the way you should be. Hallelujah, God. Shepherd, and we are the sheep. And we're really, it's great having Arsalan on the drums. Yeah. The only one keeping us in step here today. Here we go. He is the shepherd, and we are the sheep. His banner over me is love. He is the shepherd, and we are the sheep. And his banner over me is love. He is the shepherd, and we are the sheep. And his banner over me is love. <laughs> That's fun. It's one of the things you do at the dinner table is sing sometimes. It's fun. So a wonderful thought, and really it's not, strictly speaking, my wonderful thought, but I read from Bishop Wright just recently what I thought was a wonderful thought, and he said that when Jesus wanted to teach his disciples what it was meaning that he was going to die and to rise again, he didn't give them a theory, he gave them a meal. I just think that is a wonderful thought. Of course, the meal that Bishop Wright is talking about is the Last Supper, the Lord's Supper, uh, Holy Communion. And I know sometimes... Um, uh, meals can have some arguments with uh, uncle so-and-so who maybe had too much to drink or something like that. But as a rule, when we gather around a table for a meal, it is, it is special. There is something more there than just the food. Uh, there is something more. And for us as Christians, I think we can really argue that there is a connectedness between us and God when we pray at the dinner table, or the breakfast table, or the lunch table, or even for a snack, uh, or a picnic. But when we get together, God is there. When you think about it, in the Old Testament, it was the table of the Passover. And our Jewish friends, still, the table of the Passover is so important. And in the New Testament, and up until today, uh, it is the table of communion, of the Last Supper, that is so important uh, and provides a sense of, of connectedness. Uh, William Willimon, a bishop in the Methodist Church and preacher and teacher, uh, he, he said, you know, uh, as soon as you pray uh, and you begin to eat, you better watch out because the Holy Trinity might just show up because he seems to love to show up at table, at the dinner table, uh, and, and to connect very powerfully. Uh, with us. And he sees this as a great sign of hope. That we don't have to climb a mountain like Moses did to get the Ten Commandments. Or we don't have to, or we don't have to uh, uh, hike out in through the wilderness for 40 years like the Israelites escaping from Egypt on their way to the promised land. All we have to do is to set a table. 
to pray. Uh, and the Trinity wants to show up and to be there. It's a lovely thought. And, uh, of course, in the Last Supper, Jesus seems to set out a pattern. that doesn't happen at every meal, but seems to happen a lot. Um, uh, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, blessed it, uh, broke it, and gave it. Thank, break, gave, or give. Um, and so I, I read this great sermon by this guy, I can't even remember his name. And I just want to highlight those three themes real quickly. One, the first is thank, bless. And of course, when you set the table, and it doesn't have to be fancy and exquisite, but when you set the table of the food, uh, it is just such a place uh, to be thankful and to be blessed by, by God, to just soak it in. And like I told the children in the children's story, 10,000 taste buds mm. on our tongue. Surely God meant uh, for us to enjoy this food. It's, it, it speaks of grace uh, and just lavish love. Um, and uh, so many times, Jesus connects with people at meals. So often, so many, so many times. Um, and uh, like the, the Celtic Christians used to often say, often used to say, it's a thin place. And we think of thin places, I usually do, as this beautiful spot in nature. Uh, but the table, the dining room table, uh, can be a thin place where we are connected with God. Be at our table, Lord. Be here and everywhere adored. Connectedness with each other and with God. And then the other one was broken. Um, the table is a place where we can um, be healed. Uh, where we can bring our brokenness. Uh, very interesting that when Jesus uh, helped the disciples catch the fish in John's Gospel after our Lord's resurrection. They were having no luck, and then when Jesus gave them advice, they had great luck. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they went to the beach, and Jesus said, come and have breakfast. Bring the fish, <laughs> and come and have breakfast. And it was at that breakfast, where around a, a fire, a campfire, Jesus spoke into Peter's brokenness. Peter had denied Jesus three times, and Jesus says to Peter, he gives him three chances, three opportunities, to say that he loves him, to undo that betrayal. Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? And I just learned yesterday that the word for fire is only used twice in John's Gospel, or that word rather. And guess where the other time was? Mm -hmm. uh, the fire that the disciples were kind of huddling around to keep warm, the night that Peter betrayed Jesus. Uh, so uh, the meal, the table can be a place of healing and speaking into brokenness. And then giving. Part of the Christian, or a huge part of the Christian life. In fact, you could argue the, why we are a church in the first place. Why, uh, what we do as believers in the first place is to give, is to embody and to share the love of Christ with the world. Um, and it was interesting that Jesus, well it was more than interesting, it was radical departure from the norm well, Jesus, a rabbi, often ate with prostitutes and tax collectors and, and the religious leaders. In fact, everybody thought that that was a good way to be damned, mm -hmm. to hang out and to eat, to identify with these people, to say that you're somehow one of them by 
being at the same meal table. And it was in those, those moments when people were far from God, around the meal table, Jesus brought them near to God. Maybe one of the most lovely and important evangelistic tools that we could have is to invite someone for dinner mm -hmm. and just say grace. Um, and of course, as I joke with the children, um, I stole a lot of this food uh, from the food bank. But it's quite nice to think that this is the giving. Uh, giving food to people who are hungry. Uh, giving people food who, who are fearful of, of uh, where the next meal is coming from. That is, that is a, a giving as, as well. Um, I think that's a lovely thought. And you know, uh, there's a proverb, it's not in the Bible, but it's generally true. You can't teach old dogs new tricks. But when we moved to, uh, I mean, I used to cook to try to help out at home. But I uh, learned to, to use, to just kind of fall in love with the slow cooker. And you can make some amazing meals. People with hardly any talent at all can make delicious meals. And so I've started to make a lot of the meals at home. And I thought, what better way to love people uh, than to have them over for supper? So Monday nights, Esther's not around. She's working. So I've been making suppers to, to welcome people around the table and to feed. And it's been a time. Uh, it's been a great joy for me. But it's been a time of, of connectedness with God, of thanksgiving, of blessing. Uh, who knows, maybe in some of those conversations, brokenness were, was kind of healed. Uh, and, and we gave each other love. And I think we nourished each other to love others. And when this pandemic is over, <laughs> you get ready. We're going to have lots of lemon chicken. We're all coming <laughs> to your house. <laughs> want to have everybody. But I think a lovely thought is that if we each invite each other for supper and say grace and just hold on to our hats because the Trinity just probably will show up. You got a song for us, please? Yeah, thank, that's wonderful. Thank you. Um, the song actually fits really well. <laughs> um, part of the song says, Come young and old from every land, men and women of the faith. Come those with full or empty hands. Find the riches of his grace. Come, people of the risen King, who delight to bring Him praise. Come, all and tune your hearts to sing to the morning star of grace. From the shifting shadows of the earth, we will lift our eyes to Him, where still
to rejoice. We we'll just uh, pray though. We pray uh, uh, for people in need at this time. Lord Jesus Christ, our true physician and healer, be merciful to us and bring us your aid in these troubled times. Heal all our sickness and every affliction of your people. Drive out our infirmities of soul and body. Free us from all disease and especially from this pandemic. We place in your heart the elderly, the frail, those with a disability, children, young people and families, our indigenous peoples, those who are poor, lonely and isolated. As you walk with us, free them from fear and give them patience and hope, together with our loving care. We place our trust in you, our risen Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And Father of mercies, we thank you for all who care for the sick. When they diagnose, give them patience. When they protect the vulnerable, give them protection. When they work to heal, give them strength. When they comfort, give them consolation. When they are tired, give them rest. When they are discouraged, bring them hope. May we welcome and respect them as we support one another in this time of trial. And come, Holy Spirit, enlighten the minds of women and men of medical science who are working to find a cure for this viral infection. Guide their research and help them discover what you provide in creation, sure ways of control, protection, inoculation, and healing, strengthening them in their tireless work and enrich them in the virtue of hope. And the prayer, one of my favorite prayers from the prayer book about listening carefully to God's word and eating good food. Blessed Lord, who has caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them that by patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which thou hast given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So I am really excited because um, a Sunday school teachers and Maureen, your youth pastor, came up with this great idea. They're going to send uh, a $25 gift certificate uh, to all the families to buy a pizza. And when the pizza, hot pizza arrives, um, well, then you, you have this prayer that you can say, just like I was talking about. You can do exactly what I was talking about. And so to get you excited about this, and Bruce looks like he's starving. Oh, definitely, uh, yes. Uh, we've got some pizza here, and we're going to do... Uh, we're going to do that same prayer. So there's your hot, right off the oven pizza. Wow. <laughs> and here is mine. And uh, what we do, Bruce, is before you dig in, don't dig in, mm. but open up your pizza. Nice, eh? Very nice. Very nice. Yes. Mama, what's Mar it? Martin. Mama Martina's pizza, yep. Yeah. And uh, it's a very good thing. And uh, at home, you can gather around your table, but I have to stay six feet away from Bruce. Well, let's do this table here. And this is what you would do. You put the pizza in the center of your table and close your eyes mm -hmm. and take in the smell of the baked goodness of the pizza. Mm. 
Now give thanks, saying something like this. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of the sense of smell and for the gift of anticipating all the wonderful things you have in store for us. Slowly, oops, slowly open the box uh, and look at the shape of the pizza inside. The circle shape reminds us of the never-ending circle of God's love. Thank you, Lord. It also reminds us of the shape of our planet. Thank you for the earth, Lord, and for our homes, families, and friends in this world. The pizza crust can also remind us of the bread we share at communion. Thank you, Lord, for the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus. Now check out the toppings you have chosen. Or I chose for you, Bruce. <laughs> for each topping, or perhaps for each piece of pepperoni on your slice, mm. remember the face of someone dear to you. Thank you, Lord, for the faces of those we know or may know at some time in our lives. Bless them now. And it's time to dig in and enjoy. And we don't have long enough on the film, so we're going to pretend we've finished eating. And we're just going to take a quick moment and uh, place your hands on your tummy. Mine's not hard to find because of all those chips that I eat. And we'll just say, thank you, Lord, for providing us with the satisfying meal for our physical needs, and for filling our spirits with the gift of your love. Amen. Amen. Yeah, dig in, Bruce. And I hope you enjoy your pizzas, families, when they come. And adults, if you want to just do it, buy yourself a pizza, and we'll give you the words. Amen. Amen. Um,